it's time for an upgrade. For my BMW R1200 GS, I've always encountered problems while running on the highway with this windshield. I got a lot of buffeting in the shoulder area and also on my helmet. So for that, I went online and found this piece of gear from Hornig. It's a larger windshield that will help me with the wind protection. It's almost 10 centimeters taller and five wider. This should be enough wind protection even for a six footer like me. Hornig also provided me with some rubber cushions for the windshield and an additional holding mounting, an additional mounting piece that should keep the, the windshield from uh, wobbling and cracking. So it's an easy job to remove the windshield. I need my 25 millimeter Torx wrench, uh, only two bolts to remove. Let's get to work. Easy job. Now all I have to do is to remove the mounting pieces and uh, fit them on my new windshield. The first part is done. Now I need to fit the additional holding points for the larger windshield. So I have this kit that I have to fit on the bike. It's very easy to do it. Let me show you how. I have to remove this small fairing and then I have two bolts over here that need to be connected to the part. I'll slide the metal bracket in place with great care so I won't damage the windshield lifting system and then bolt it on. This other half will be fitted on the top of the windshield of the mounting point of the windshield and it also comes with two plastic shims that need to be fitted. Time for the windshield to go on the bike. For the last part, I'll connect the extra holding point for the windshield provided by Hornig with these two bolts that I found inside the kit. All the bolts are in place. Now I can check if my windshield still goes up and down. Just perfect. So I'll leave it up and then I'll fit my small fairings on each side. Now everything is ready. I can't wait to go on the highway to check out the wind protection offered by this Horning windshield. As a rider, it's very useful to make yourself heard in the traffic. So for that, I've taken into consideration replacing my original BMW R1200 GS horn with a new one. And for that, I've took the Hornig Nautilus horn. This is a bigger unit and should make a lot of noise. Can't wait to fit it on the bike and hear how it sounds. For the first part, I have went to the manual that Hornig provided for me and I have to remove some parts from the bike. Uh, at first, I have to remove the saddle and some bits from fairings. Let's get to work. Underneath this fairing in the front area should be my original horn. First, I need to remove the fairing and then disconnect the horn and take it off the bike. Side fairing is off and now I can see my old horn. So this is the original BMW horn that I need to remove. For the next step, I need to fit the Nautilus horn on the bike. So Hornig provided me with an extra bracket that needs to be fitted on the bike. The holding point is on the top of the frame in between the fork legs. I have to remove a bolt and then plug it back in. Okay. 
Time for the interesting part, the wiring. Hornig provided me with an extra relay, an extra fuse, uh, original plug for the BMW horn, and also the cables for the battery. It's not that easy as it seems. You only have to pay uh, great attention uh, to where you fit the, 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 the wiring, where you uh, put it on, and also uh, fit it with some zip ties so it won't come off. Enough talking, let's get to work. Plug in the horn, plug the relay, so it will open only when the K is on. I need to somehow find a place to fit it on the bike. The extra, the, the extra wires, I need to fit them very tight somewhere. And I think this might be the right place to fit it on. So just like that over there. Then I'll connect the wires for the horn. The positive, that goes exactly to the horn. My wire comes nice along with the braking hoses. And then I have to be careful where I plug the red wire. So I should put it to the positive. Next, I will plug the negative terminal on the horn and then put it towards the battery. To get the best routing for my wires, I'll need to remove the side cover from the tank and also the battery cover. Not very hard to do it, only three bolts. And now I can see the battery. So here it is. So I found the best route for my wires. Now Hornig provided me with a cover for them that I will fit before uh, tying up the wires to the frame. So this might take a few minutes, but it's very useful and the cables will be protected. Now I can plug the horn to the battery. So red to positive, black to negative. This was my old horn. Now I have a four times bigger horn. My new windshield from Hornig, it's on the bike. So I can now take the bike for a test on the highway and honk at somebody. And now for the test. I'm on a highway, I'm at around uh, 50 kilometers an hour and I can speak with you very clearly actually. I don't feel any wind uh, around my shoulders or around my face. Everything is going above my pelvis. So far, so good. Very happy with my new windshield. I've tested it on the highway at speeds of around 130 km an hour. No wobbling, uh, no vibrations coming in the upper area. The system is very steady. I like it a lot. Uh, and I must say, the wind protection is increased by far with around 50%. I, I almost uh, can speak and I don't need a full face helmet at speeds of around 100 km an hour, which is a very big thing. It's a huge increase in wind protection. Now that I've finished testing my windshield, it's time to test my other upgrade, the Horning Nautilus horn. And for that, I bought a friend's BMW F1200 GS Adventure that comes with a uh, usual horn. So they are now close enough. Let's see if the horn sounds good on this one, the stock one. It's pretty loud, I might say, but I don't think it's enough when you're in a car listening to music. And for that, I have the horning. Check that out. I want to hear it again. Now that's what I call a horn. I don't know if you heard it very well through my microphone. So I've downloaded an application to measure up the sound. So I'll test the Hornig at first. This is at uh, 70, 60, something around there. And let's honk. <coughs> Woo! 102. That was the peak point. Let's check the stock one. 
So we have 70 something. The maximum for this one is 93. So I got around at least 10 decibels more from the Horning Nautilus horn, which is very good. Everybody can hear me now. We're in the car, we're listening to music. Oh, rider, it's outside. I have a radio station with me. I will call him and he will honk. The application is on and we will see the peak points of each horn. The stock one versus the Nautilus Hornig horn. Honk now, please. So, there's nothing happening over here. So, we can hear him, but the application is not recording nothing from the uh, stock horn. And now we will test the Nautilus horn from Hornig. Let's check it out. Hong now, please. So, it's recovering around 80 and 85. So, how was it? So, it went to 85 maximum. The peak point was 85 decibels in the car. It's a big difference in between the stock one and the Horning uh, Nautilus horn because it will record around 10 decibels more from the Horning, which is good actually. Imagine that you're in a traffic situation and you must make yourself heard. What do you prefer, a stock horn or the Horning Nautilus horn? I think this one will be your answer. 